Hi there. This is Dennis Velko with Out Bureau. That is O U T B U R O dot com, where we bring you episodes featuring LGBT entrepreneurs, professionals, and community leaders. Today, we are joined by the two founders and principals of AG2 Digital, a marketing and communications firm based in New York City. Hoorah! Welcome, uh, Robson and Stephen, to the Out Bureau Voices show. Hi, Dennis. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. And uh, so uh, because I know we are on a time limit, uh, because right now I am on the cheap, so we're doing this in a 40-minute to stay in line with the um, uh, Skype limitation, uh, we're going to dive right into you guys. Now, uh, do know that I will be switching this to the person who's speaking. So just know, um, don't know how you guys are going to want to do little hand signals, but if you find you're going uh, over each other, just one of you kind of pause and let the other one take the lead and just bounce back and forth as you guys like. Okie dokie. And uh, so one, if uh, one of you would like to give me a little bit of a uh, background on to how AG2 Digital got started, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, well, I tend to over-talk him, so I'll, I'll go first. <laughs> um, um, I got my background in hospitality, tourism marketing. Um, I worked for 20 years in various uh, boutique hotels here in New York City in a sales and marketing capacity. Um, and then, um, like a lot of New Yorkers and like a lot of people now, at a downturn of the hospitality industry, like what's happening now, um, I left my job and started an art consulting sales and marketing company. And then I'll let Hobson talk about his start. Um, I, I've always been a designer. I graduated in graphic design back on the early 90s. And um, right after school, I got a job at Hallmark. I worked for Hallmark for a few years, and then I moved to New York. Here I worked for Forbes magazine, Business Week, uh, and my last job was with News Corp. And as Steve was mentioning, with the downturn of the economy in 2008, my whole department was gone, and that's when I started doing freelance, and freelance turned into the digital agency that we have now. Steve and I um, run the agents. That's pretty much it. Okay, so um, so how long has a, uh, AG2 Digital been around as a company? We started in 2015, um, and as we, when we first began, we were more of a old school print graphic design company. And we quickly saw that the real business was going to be in website design. So that's, uh, I would say, three years ago, we shifted everything to web design. Um, and then further, we went into more SEO um, capabilities, SEM, SEO, PPC, uh, that we've been doing for about two years now. Okay. So do you, uh, are, do you guys do all or most of the work or kind of really focus on the client acquisition and then kind of subcontract out some of that work? Hobson does all the design work, um, which is amazing. We subcontract out the some of the SEO work and the social media uh, advertising. Okay, uh, uh, cool beans. Now you are in the New York City area, so therefore, I bet you guys have seen a lot of uh, change here in the COVID. But I guess before we get to kind of that, to understand the impact of COVID uh, on your business, let's kind of back up and talk a little bit about as you were starting your business, what are some of the ways that you guys have, um, you know, found your clients and, you know, got the word out about your business? Yeah, um, definitely. We started the company um, and I, you know, I just want to back up a little bit and say that Hopsa and I both were never entrepreneurs to begin with. We both were raised to go to school, get a degree, and get a paycheck. And that's kind of how we operated for most of our careers here in, I guess you would say, corporate America. 
Um, but when we found ourselves um, in a situation where we had to create our own uh, company, we were a little bit out of fish out of water. And our first place that we started really practicing and learning about getting clients and selling for ourselves was like the LGBT networking community, uh, specifically out business builders is a breakfast meeting that we attended. We joined the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce. And that was how we got our first clients. Um, and that still to this day is where we're getting the majority of our clients is the networking that we've been able to do within the uh, in LGBTQ community. Oh, well, wonderful. And, and I, I guess I'll kind of jump in and, you know, say how, you know, there is no age limitation on being an entrepreneur. Um, you can jump into to being an entrepreneur at, at any point in your, in, in your path, you know, from, you know, 16 years old to 76 years old. And uh, it's very interesting as I'm interviewing people right now, um, like my call earlier, who I'm talking with next week, she's, she's a young entrepreneur, hasn't even graduated from co college yet, and working on a, a, a mobile app. And uh, earlier today was a, a life coach, um, you know, who, uh, from the UK. And, you know, I think it's very poignant that life and businesses uh, throw us curveballs. And, you know, it's no longer the day, you know, like whenever my father had basically worked for two employers his, his whole life. And, you know, but, but today the reality is, is that companies really aren't loyal to you. Uh, and they're only loyal to you as long as their profitability allows them to be so. And, you know, for whatever reason, no fault of your own, you could be let go, laid off, whatever nicety words want to be utilized. And in times like this in COVID, where people have been, you know, sent home and not called back. And so your story kind of really, really is one to, to, to pay close attention to because um, you, although it wasn't COVID at that time, it was an economic downturn. Uh, so there's that similarity and out of it, uh, what I'm hearing is out of necessity, um, you had to kind of shake the old mindset that uh, and the and the fallacy of, you know, that corporate America is going to look out for you and be your mainstay. And so you had to dust that off and do it for yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's it's weird. Weird. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Hobson. That's OK. I, I just wanted to add to that, that the fact that um, Today, um, we have all the facility in the world with um, technology. You know, you have a computer in your house and you have a printer. And right there and then you have an office full at people's office. You can communicate with anyone anywhere in the world. Uh, and that makes very easy to be your own business, your own man. So I just want to add to that. And we're perfect examples. Of the, of the situation. What's happening now with COVID is exactly what happened to us. So a lot, I know a lot of people are, are going to be losing their jobs. A lot of people are already starting the freelance work. We're here to say that it can be done. And ironically, that's what we do. We help other individuals or small companies brand themselves, which, um, and to get online, we offer all of the Things that you would need, the brand, the logo, the website, um, the, the SEO capabilities. We, you know, and ironically, our business has grown more in the past two months because of the services that we offer that we've experienced uh, in, in, in years. Um, so I don't, I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, well, well, so. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of back that up for you in, in that, um, you know, probably that's stemming out of people aren't, um, especially in New York. I've lived in New York myself. I know it's a you know, heavy pedestrian uh, city. So you're, you're walking around 
Um, you know, you're taking that street uh, uh, um, taxi or Uber or Lyft. Uh, yes, you do do the subways as well, at least whenever I live there. But a lot of, you know, when you're living in New York, for those that aren't aware of it, yes, it's this huge city, but it's also small communities. Um, like whenever I lived there, you know, I, we had some of our favorite restaurants that we would go to, you know, the ones on a regular basis were within a couple of blocks, the, the, the little place with the flowers on the corner were just two blocks away. I always, per, if I can, I always love fresh flowers in the house. And, um, you know, so it's a very, it, although it seems overwhelming to a lot of people like, oh my gosh, how many millions of people live there? Well, you know, if you live out in Queens, you're not going into Chelsea for your prescription or you're not going, you know, from uh, the Upper West Side all the way out to Brooklyn for your groceries, right? You you have within a certain area, a certain uh, distance, it's more like a small town. And so... And and, and, just as an example, one of our clients now is a, actually a florist. And because of the uh, downturn and the COVID, he was actually going to have to close his business. He had laid off all of his staff. He was not sure he was going to be able to pay the rent. And he's also a member of one of our networking groups. So we met with him and we, you know, we had been talking about SEO for months, years with him. So he finally agreed that to do it and his business. And after one month of local SEO, working with his Google, my business platform, uh, getting him signed up with local listings, he was able, he, his business is now where it was before the coronavirus. Um, wow. his, it's, it's, it's incredible. He's um, in one month, he has 13,000 new searches and the majority of that is new, new people looking at his website. In the past couple of weeks, he was telling me uh, 65 new phone calls, most of those new clients. So he's, if not, uh, he's thinking about having to rehire. Um, and here he was thinking he had to close. Wow, what a great, what a great story. And, you know, how true, uh, because, you know, when you are, no matter where you are in the country or the world, I mean, taking that right there, for an example, in an area where possibly even those new customers were, were within a certain distance, right, because they looked online for a local florist, um, if your competitors aren't online, if your competitors are not optimized, then you taking those extra steps to ensure that your website is optimized, you have great content, uh, but especially for those kind of businesses where you're t ensuring that you are showing up in the Google Maps and, and getting as many what's called business citations. A business citation is a listing on a local service. Um, so for an example, LGBT businesses out there, you can add your business to outbureau.com. That is called a business citation. And that all helps your overall business uh, website ranking move up. And it helps, uh, especially when you have your full address, uh, when Google sees that you are on uh, you know, X number of sites with a business citation listing, not only are you on their record, but when they see that you are also on all these other websites, Yelp, you know, uh, whatever other uh, business site listings there are, that's going to further give power, give Google says, oh, yes, that is a business. It is because I see all of these listings on all these other various websites. And so therefore I'm going to increase them. Now also pulling that together with um, uh, local content. So uh, uh, blogs and so forth, uh, having a, the Facebook page with rankings there. So, so let's talk about, since that is a, a recent customer and, and as I understand it, you've been trying to work with that person and you've been cultivating that uh, client for quite some time, correct? Yes. And I think maybe Hobson could talk about the process that we went through with him, uh, the branding process and the process that we go through and how we took him um, from a, a logo to now being very successful. 
Yeah, Lua, uh, La Froda Orlan came to us, uh, I'd say, four or five years ago. He was one of our, of our first clients. He came to us because he was rebranding. He was changing the dress and he was rebranding. And through that, we created a new logo. We created a new website for him, new content, uh, social media platform, uh, all the collateral material for the store as well. Uh, and we branded in such a way that it matched the interior of his store. First, he got an architect and did his store with the colors that he wanted, with all the image that he wanted inside, uh, the pattern of the wood. And from that, I derived all the creative elements. And it, it, the website and the store, they are a perfect match. And then once we did that, that's when we came with the idea of enhancing his business with SEO. But he was doing so well at the time, and everything was working so perfectly that you know we took a little leap to get him to do SEO. So as Steve was mentioning, just recently, he switched to SEO as well. But he has been a client of ours for, for many, many years. Um, and you know that's how uh, La Froda Orlean came to us. I think he's, you know, he's obviously benefiting from the fact that internet use is up by 70% since everyone started staying at home. Um, and d data usage on your phone is up by 47%. Um, and I was looking at this statistic, the, um, you know, when someone buys a product at a store and then goes and picks it up, um, like you would do at Home Depot or any other store like that, that kind of purchase is up 554%. So um, you've just got to be online, um, and you. And I, I think that's the most important thing is is that is being have a strong digital presence is the is the way you're going to succeed now. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And so p part of the part of the lesson though here too for for the entrepreneur is you you have to be online and. Uh, for the entrepreneurs out there, take a look at your current and past client base, if you have some, and revisit them, especially if your services will enable them to, as a, as a business, enable them to thrive better in this environment. If you do do marketing and web and service and web uh, development and local local SEO and so forth. You are perfect. You are primed. If you are if you are not going back to clients uh, like like these folks have here, um, if you have if you're not going back to clients who said no to you over and over again for the last several years, now is the time where they potentially will say yes because. Look at this as a case in point right here as to, to how valuable that is, because there, you know, being in New York, again, getting back to that foot traffic, that florist was was doing great, had a beautiful shop. And that's what gets those people who are walking by on the street front uh, to walk in. Right. Um, but and they had the website, but they weren't optimized. They didn't at that point didn't see the need back several years ago to invest that additional funds and taking it to the, to the next level. And, um, and that's okay. Cause, cause now look at what uh, has been able to, to be, to be accomplished. So, yeah, exactly. And another thing, another thing that uh, um, people in business have to think about is um, your presence online. It is extremely important because your presence online is going to give you reviews. And over 90% of people who shop online look at reviews. If you have less than 4.0, they would move away from you immediately. So you have to have a presence not only online, but you have to have you have to keep that up in order to have good reviews. So you know, I eat anywhere at this point in New York City. There's nothing. We've been we've been new, restaurant deprived. For so long, but anyway, yeah, it's true. Like I, you know, when, when we, restaurants were open and we had our choice, you know, anything less than a four point three or you know below, I, I I just wouldn't go. Um, you know, Nancy Pelosi said that all roads lead to Russia, 
right? In my case, I make, I'm changing a little bit. All roads lead to your website and your Google reviews. Um, and, you know, the, the, you know, the Google is offering an incredible free product. Um, you know, Google My Business is such a strong platform now. And just downloading photos, you've got 20 or 30 photos, you're already beating your competition. And you're going to get much more hits. Google loves photos on your Google My Business. Um, by putting your business address in the footer of your website so that Google can verify the website address to your Google My Business, again, you're going to increase your search capacity. Little things like that. Having your hours um, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, on your Google My Business platform immediately increases. Um, little things you can do for free. Um, Google's there. To, they, want you, they want you to spend more time on the internet. So they're going to try to keep you there. Right. And they're trying to be relevant. They're trying to be the most relevant search results out there. And so, you know, as Stephen is indicating, the more information that you provide, you're making it easy for Google to serve up your business to its searchers. And therefore, the more the more information you have, the better. So I'm going to give you one tip. And, and it's the reason why when you search uh, Google for LGBTQ on, or LGBT entrepreneur, LGBT professional, or um, LGBT employer ratings, or LGBT reviews, L LGBT employer reviews, why Out Bureau is either number one or on the first page. So here is a tip for you. When you are uploading those images, don't just take a photo and go upload, because if you do, guess what? The image file name, the .jpg file name on that is going to be something like image 300178.jpg. Well, what the hell does that mean? Yeah. It means nothing. So if you can Google this, how to search engine optimize your photos. So what I do is every single image on my website of outbureau.com, every single image is keyword optimized in the file name itself. So it will say something to the effect of Out Bureau dash LGBT entrepreneurs, corporate equality, employee ratings, LGBT or gay, lesbian, transgender, queer online community dot JPG, right? So all of those keywords are stuffed in the .jpg uh, uh, file name or PNG file, you know, file name and so forth. So when you get back to your website, there's additional things you can do there. And that's, I will leave it to these great folks to inform you. I don't want to take away all those secrets. However, you can Google it. It's not that much of a secret. But just so that all of you are aware, less than 1%, less than 1% of the websites that are on the internet right now do that so if you just do that you are already promoting yourself up to the uh one percent category now when you upload those images to your google my business page with all of the other information those keywords on your e electronic file name of your images are also going to help google know exactly what your business is about because now it'll say New York, Chelsea, flower shop dot JPEG, not just image 311707.jpg. So take that tip and run with it. And when you need additional help on furthering it, make sure you, you seek some professionals. You know what? You don't do your own taxes, do you? Probably not. Most business owners don't do their own finances or, or many other tasks. So it's just like that when you're looking at hiring professionals to help you stand out on the internet with your local searches and, and wider, it's best to hire a professional who does this all the time. Because Google will change it. Once it once you think you've got it, it will change. Uh, there's this new thing. Have you heard of BERT? I guess you've heard. Uh, BERT, I don't, I don't even know what it stands for, but Google's now getting away from keywords. Um, yeah. And that's why you, know, you might want 
So if you want to know why you're being told to write blogs and do podcasts and videos, it's because Google likes big chunks of information now. And so if you can write copy and write blogs in a conversational tone that Google can understand, because now Google is moving to more voice searches. So Google can't just look for keywords. They want a big chunk of information. And that's why content marketing, blogging is so important. Absolutely. Uh, and that with those images are just one piece of the, of the huge puzzle. Right. But that's one thing that, again, 99 percent of websites don't do. And there's an easy way to check that, by the way. Uh, if you go to your own website, uh, just hover over an image and right click it. You're going to see the alt. What's called the alt, uh, uh, the, the title and the alt text. Uh, and again, Google, Google image, uh, website image optimization. And if you go to right click and download, you're going to see what that image is, um, is named. Uh, so although Google, you are right, is moving away from the amount of emphasis that they put on keyword tasks, uh, that, that image optimization is a, is a huge gaping open opportunity where uh, and, the vast majority of people don't don't pay attention to you. So, and Dennis, uh, just to illustrate a, a, a service that we have for free, if anyone wants to know more details about their website, how it is running, and the, go to our, our website, and we offer free reports on local SEO and SEO. All they have to do is type the domain of their website, and they will have a report let them know exactly what you are saying. If they have misspelled uh, uh, um, images, if the website is running slow, if they don't have the right content, if they have broken links, all that would be on a report. And we can talk to them and help them out to clear that out so they can take the report with them and do themselves. Whatever they need, we are here for them. Awesome. Yeah, and I... And I be, in, order uh, to get, in order to get that, do they fill out like a contact form providing you their information? No, no, no. No, they just type their uh, domain and the report comes up to them. It's pretty much that simple. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And I will point out that we are running some pride packages. Um, so any everything from branding, website, and SEO is all on a on a page called ag2digital.com slash packages. So check it out. Good prices. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for that. So, um, you know, being entrepreneurs, it's a difficult journey, right? You know, you've got your ups and your downs, you know. It is. It is. It is very difficult, but it is very rewarding. You know, you you help people out, people come to us with a need and we deliver what they want. We see them grow, we see our business grow. Uh, we deliver exactly what they want. We do research in our business. We come with strategy, we do implementation. And at the end, it is, it is a 360 degree circle of just enjoyment. There is bumps in the road here and there because any kind of work that you do we find bumps in the road, but at the end of the day, it is extremely rewarding and it is very rewarding to work with the gay community as well, just giving back to people who gave to us. So that's pretty much. Awesome. And, uh, you know, um, I love, as an entrepreneur, I, I love that the branding and the building phase, uh, you know, getting the word out. And that's what this is really about, you know, because if, if if you have a business, let's say you're 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 a lawyer. Well, if if no one knows that you exist, if they can't find you on, you know, there's multiple ways in which a lawyer should be marketing himself. But you could say, oh, I went to law school and I'm opening my own practice, and you rent an office and you go and you sit in the office all day. Well, if you're not doing marketing, guess what? You're not going to get any clients. I mean, because you got to get those clients in the door somehow, and Mount, word of mouth will get you so far, but there has to be that constant, you know, education and awareness out there. And as, as you guys have pointed out and made it very clear, uh, you know, having that online presence, because 
no one goes to the yellow pages, you know, anymore, do they? I don't and, even know why and, they make them. Yeah, and part of our implementation is the outreach as well. Once your website is done, tested, implemented, we go further by, you know, getting in contact with all the clients uh, of whomever has finished the job and communicated that there is a new website up, that there are new service up, uh, and we do that in print format, and we can do digitally as well, whatever is the best suit for the client. Right now, we are working with a lawyer. We are just in a final phase of her work, and she wanted to do the outreach by print, which we are doing, as opposed to digital. It's, she says that has a little bit more of a personal touch to get a card and to get a brochure. Uh, so we are doing that, but we do. Yeah, but, and I will point out we have another attorney. We work with a, we work with a lot of law firms and financial companies, and we started with SEA uh, Legal about six months ago, and they weren't really ranking. They were ranking on the eleventh page of Google for a lot of the services that they provide: immigration law, uh, Bitcoin, um, and real estate law. They're now on the first page of Google after six months for immigration and the um, real estate. Yeah, so it, it definitely works. And, you know, I, I just want to encourage anyone out there that's maybe going to lose their job or what, thinking of going out on their own and starting a freelance or a small company. We've just seen so many success stories. Uh, SEO is one of those words. It's hard to explain. It's hard to sell, actually. But once you see the results, um, it's 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 such it's such a good feeling to see and to watch someone's business grow and to be able to say, yeah, I told you so. <laughs> yeah, in a good way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, there, there's whenever I'm working on on um, things for myself, it's like, oh, I'm going after these keywords. I'm expanding my my vocabulary on what I'm going after. And it's like I'm going after this. And then after, you know, a, a set amount of time and set amount of work and then seeing the result, like, yes, 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 yes. And then seeing the traffic come in, you know, because of that. And uh, I, I can imagine how much, how rewarding it is for you because you get to do that on a regular basis with your clients and, and help them and guide them through all of the, the critical critical things to take action on and then and you begin to see those results uh, uh, to me that's thrilling uh, I enjoy it for myself and um, I, I've done a little bit of this work in the past for past clients but uh, it's like I needed to focus on my own uh, business uh, um, for a while so do definitely appreciate and value what you do and again, for um, whether you're looking at starting a new business or you currently have a business and would, would like to take your game up into the next level, you know, um, you don't extract your own teeth, you go to a professional. Uh, hopefully you don't, uh, you don't have to file for divorce, but if you do, who do you use? A professional divorce attorney. So whenever you are looking at taking your business to the next level, uh, or launching your business, you know you have to focus in on on your online marketing. That is, that it is not optional any longer. It is a absolute must have. You also, uh, it is no longer optional to focus on localization. Uh, if you do serve a local community, um, and, and and even if you're national, you still want to target you know major metropolitan areas. So you still need to localize, even if you're a national company. Uh, so hire, hire folks like, uh, AG2, uh, right here and, uh, support your local, uh, support your other LGBT businesses. And, and as you heard, they have some special offers here in the month of cry. Uh, we have just a few more moments here. So if I could, uh, if you guys could share a little bit about how you guys kind of handle the stress, what you guys do. Uh, to kind of let go and relax. I personally like to go on a, a lot of walks and hiking. What do you guys like to do? I play tennis. Um, nice. I play, I, before COVID, I was playing once a week or so. It's difficult in New York, um, oh, nice. but I do play tennis. 
I bought a bike recently um, okay. to try to get a little more exercise because my obviously my gym is closed. And so no more yoga classes. I'm doing yoga on YouTube. Yoga with Adrian. Check it out. <laughs> yoga with Adrian. All right. How about you, Robson? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm privileged to live in New York City. As I am the law, I love the arts. I go to the museum constantly. I go to openings. Uh, I am 30, so I eat a lot out. Uh, and I like to travel. We were, we were just in Cartagena a one week prior to the closing of the airport, which was, I still have a friend on Peru. She lives in Germany and she has been there like for four months. So I love to travel as well. So in New York City, you know, it's a city that you can do so much. Um, so in addition to movies and all the things that the city has to offer. Right, absolutely. Well, 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 good to hear that you guys have some balance in your life. I know it uh, can be challenging as a small business owner and, and working with other entrepreneurs who have deadlines and want things done yesterday. Once they make a finally get, get off the horn, get off the uh, boat and make a decision, right? It's like, oh, I want this done yesterday, right? Uh, so, uh, definitely good. You guys have your, your hobbies and things to focus on what balances you. Uh, so again, that is a G2 digital.com. Well, I thank you guys so much for taking time out of, uh, the day today to chat with us and, uh, especially sharing your success story with the local florist. I think that's very, uh, a story that is uh, right on point for today. So I'm sure folks will be very interested in, in hearing that and looking at that as inspiration. So thank you thank guys. You, so, thank you hey, for thank so you, much Dennis. for uh, joining us today. This is Dennis Velko with Out Bureau Voices. You can find this episode and others at outbureau.com. That is O-U-T-B-U-R-O. Dot com. And that is now changed to episodes up at the top. And if you are viewing this on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Also, be sure to check it out on the different uh, um, podcasting websites such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Radio, and about 10 others. You can take this on the go. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.